I'm waking up My eyes fixed on you Your light has come New mercies hold me God, you give good things You never abandon me You see my heart From dawn till dusk My song will I'm coming into love I can see
I'm just gonna take you at your word You never lie You're by my side The past is gone No longer bound by the old me I've been set free Your love is resurrecting me Ha. 
I've been walking around with the weight of the world on my shoulders. Oh, too busy looking down. It's getting heavy and I cannot hold it anymore. Oh, a broken heart you will not despise. You are not the man that you should lie You're picking up my pieces every time When I see you first you will renew my mind A broken heart you will not despise Oh you are not the man that you should lie When I see your verse, you will renew my mind Hey, steady, steady, you're there Steady, steady, you care Come on Steady, steady, you're there Every time Steady, steady
today. So good morning to everybody who came here and to our online campus. We want to say good morning. It's so good you could be with us today. I want to remind you guys today that the joy of the Lord is your strength. That no matter what you went through this week, no matter how hard or challenging it was and every obstacle that the enemy threw your way, let today let the joy in your spirit rise because the enemy cannot stand when you smile in his face when he throws all his attacks at you. He cannot stand it. So today, more than ever, just smile and let him know that regardless of what he puts in you or what he puts at you, you are a child of God. And you are seated next to the Father on the throne, and you are with him. You are with him there, and just be with him today as we worship him. Um, Please stand today as we worship the Lord. Father God, we just want to thank you, God. We want the joy of the Lord to come down today and be upon us, Lord, to carry us the rest of this week, Lord, and, and every single day, Lord God. Um, Lord, don't let our minds focus on the obstacles, but let us focus on your heart, God, your presence, God, the praises of the people. Let them rise as your blessings come down, Lord. Let us be... Um, in one accord today as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's worship him. Get your hands together this morning, church. Come on. It's a fast one now. What a blessing to be together worshiping our great God. Hallelujah. Move the mountains. Show the wind and waves be still. You cast out demons. Hey. Fear the empty soul be filled. Now there's breakthrough. Hey. Now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power hey. and the keys to do. You hold us in. Mercy with your mighty miracles. And now there's breakthrough. Now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power and the keys to do the same. Now we proclaim in Jesus' name. Now all fall down in Jesus' name. Now we proclaim 
like some Holy Ghost noise up in here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. God. Oh, nothing like getting on fire for the Lord. Come on. Jesus, God, thank you for your faithfulness. This morning we come to you with full hearts, asking that you would restore us. God, fill us up this morning. Make your presence known in this place. We know you can do this. Whatever battle you're facing this morning, I'd encourage you, bring it to Jesus. Nobody's going to do it like him. Even when we can't see it, he's working. He's going to do it again. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet oh, Your promise Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. the night won't last I know the night won't last come on your word will come to pass my heart will sing your praise again Jesus hey Jesus, you're still enough, always enough, keep me within your love, and my heart will sing your praise again, your promise, yes, your promise still stays. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Your promise, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. See you move, hey, you move the map. 
still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithful I'm still in your hands I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet. Your promise still stands Great is your faith you know it Sing it if you believe it Come on I'm still in his hands I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never I've seen you move I've seen you move You move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do Taking those mountains away hey, when there was no way. And I believe, do you believe us? You made a way, you made a way where there was no way. And I believe, then I believe I'll see you do it. I've seen you move, I've seen you. you were going to make it, but God picked you up and carried you through that time. Don't forget his faithfulness. There's a lot of things we're not going to understand. We're not going to know how he's going to work it out. We have to believe that he will. He's going to do it because he's a good father. He's good from the very beginning of creation. He made sure to deem that everything was good. He's good. Trust in him. Whatever you're holding on to this morning, if you feel that things have been unjust, if you feel like you've been treated unfairly, or you just don't know why things are happening the way they are, there's only one thing you need to do, is hand it over to Jesus. Hand it over to him and watch what he's going to do. He's faithful. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands from the moment I wake up, from the moment that I wake up. Till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause why? Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so. Good. 
sanctuary and those watching us online that someone needs a touch of healing in their bodies and I also feel that that someone 
has an issue with finances. Finances. So, we're going to continue to follow social distancing, but I'm asking, if you're here this morning, you need a healing touch in your body, a healing touch, just come up and stand at the altar. You can spread out, but you can come up and stand. Healing touch in your body. Secondly, if you have a financial need, if you have a financial need, it could be, if you have a financial need, I want you to come and stand also. Just come and stand, or you can stand in the aisles. walk the earth and he would heal people there were times when he laid his hands on them and healed them but there were other times he just spoke a word he just spoke a word and they were healed you know in our Pentecostal circles we believe in the laying on, laying on of hands but I'm telling you, Jesus can speak a word right now, and you can be healed. Amen. The Bible says that one of the names for our God is Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. Maybe you're here and you have a financial need. I want you to know that your God will provide. So I'm asking if we could just pray specifically, intercede right now for healing. Let's close our eyes. Father God, right now, Lord, we, Lord, I've been obedient to what I feel you were having me to do this morning. And God, there are those who have stepped forward that have acknowledged they, they need a healing touch in their body. God, you know their name. God, you know the issue. So God, I'm praying, Father, I'm asking right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that those individuals that need a touch of healing in their bodies, would you touch them now and heal them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we believe in the miraculous today. We believe you're still healing. We believe you're still moving by your spirit. It is not the touch of man. It is the touch of God. So I'm praying right now, God, touch those individuals that need a touch in their body. Heal them in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for those who are watching us online, wherever they may be. I know, God, I know someone is watching us online. They need a touch in their body. Touch and heal them, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I pray as you touch and as you heal, you do it for your name's sake. That you receive the glory and that you receive the praise. Lord, we are, we, are, we, are, we are in agreement right now that there will be a mighty, miraculous healing throughout this church in the name of Jesus. Christ, your name is above cancer. Christ, your name is above sickness. Christ, your name is above chronic pain. Your name is above depression. Your name is, the, is above mental disorders and chemical imbalances. Your name is above heart disease. Your name is above diabetes. Your name is above high blood pressure. Your name is above COVID-19. Your name is above all those things. Heal, we ask in Jesus' name. Now, God, we pray for those who have a financial need. God, you, 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 you own the, fat, the cattle on a thousand hill. You are a shepherd. We shall not be in one. So, God, I'm praying right now. We are joining our hearts and our minds. And we're praying for those here in our sanctuary and those who are watching us online. Those that have a financial need, 
Would you open up the heavens and pour a blessing on them? We ask in the name of Jesus. You are still a God that does the miraculous. And Father, your children are asking. They have a need today. God, wherever it may be, God, somebody needs a job, provide that job. Somebody has a college, uh, a student in college or the, or the university, and they need some help. God, provide that financial need. God, someone needs a bill. They've got a bill that they need to be paid, and they don't have the money to pay it, and they don't know where that money is coming from. But you can provide, oh God. So we're praying right now. Provide by your power that you receive the glory. And you receive the praise. Even those watching us online. Encourage someone today. Let them know that you've got this. Let them know you're going to take care of it. Because you are God. Now, Lord God, we ask your continued blessings, your continued presence, and your continued anointing in the remainder of this service. And God, I pray, I pray, I pray, Father God, we get testimonies that we may rejoice. Folks that have been healed, folks that received a financial blessing, may we get those testimonies, that may we rejoice in your name and in and, and your faithfulness. Father God, we pray these things, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said? Amen. Now give him praise now for what he's going to do. Come on, church, lift them up. Lift them up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. You may return to your seats. Hallelujah, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, church. Oh, we can do better than that. Good morning, church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am glad to be with you all today, glad to be here. And to those who are watching online, thank you for, for tuning in uh, to our service today. And, and I hope that this service has been, will be a blessing to all of you. Uh, a few quick announcements before we continue our service this morning. Just as a reminder, we are uh, following social distancing, so if you could remember that, and uh, please wear a mask when you come in. And as you know, when we get too many people here in our main sanctuary to follow social distancing, we will open up our, our overflow, our tithes and offerings box in our foyer. Uh, our ushers or our greeter can show you where that is, so please uh, know that. And as many of you are, please take advantage of our online giving. We have two uh, needs in ministry. Uh, one is uh, our worship team, and the second, our food ministry on Friday. So if you feel you would like to get uh, involved or either get information about ministering on our worship team on Sunday mornings or working with our team on Fridays that gives food, food away to our community, please give our office a call and we will connect you with those ministry leaders who oversee uh, those ministries. And both of those ministries are blessings. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. It is a blessing to be part of the worship team as you usher in the spirit of God for the people of God and the house of God. And it is a blessing to be involved in the compassion ministries. Amen? Giving food out to those who are in need. So, uh, our, both of our, our uh, men's conference and our women's conference are going to be going on this year, but there's going to be some changes. There, there is some information in your bulletin. So, for the brothers, our men's conference is October 17th. It is a one-day conference this year, though, one-day conference. It is in Camp Hill. Um, uh, there's some social distancing that we will be practicing. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Please sign up, and we'll get you that information. For our ladies... So what we're doing differently this time, ladies, is the live event is happening, I believe, at one of our churches in, in Camp Hill, uh, Pennsylvania, but we're going to be simulcasting the service to different locations. Well, Evangel is one of, one of those locations. Amen? Amen. Amen. So ladies, I guess you can give our office a call. We'll get you that information, but what we're going to be doing is opening up our church for you to come in um, and for others to come in, our ladies. Our overflow will be available as well, and that way you can see the service as, as it is happening live in Camp Hill. Amen. And the information is uh, in your bulletin. Amen? Amen? Amen. You ready to get into the Word of God? Okay. All right. Open your Bibles. Let's get ready. Let's get going this morning.
your Bibles this morning to Acts chapter 14. And this morning we will be looking at verses 20 through 22. Acts 14, verses 20 through 22. When you found it, say amen. amen. All right. The title of my sermon this morning is, It Will Be Worth It. I promise you. It will be worth it. Let's pray. Father God, we, we, we are just so thankful that you allowed us to gather this morning. God, we are, we're thankful that we can gather. But we know that we have brothers and sisters in the persecuted church where they can gather. Lord, I pray that we take advantage of this opportunity. Lord, we thank you for your spirit that's with us, that lives in us. And Lord, I pray now, Father, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that as your word of God is being taught and read, you would touch the hearts of your people. You would transform and change us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is the day the many men and sport fans are waiting for. <laughs> and many wives dread. <laughs> today is the start of our Philadelphia Eagles football season. Amen. The coaches have been preparing the players by having them run sprints up and down the field. They've been practicing plays and they have been lifting weights. It's been a lot of hard work for them. But when the game starts, the purpose of all that conditioning will become evident. It is to make them strong and to help them make it through this football season. My hope this morning is that this sermon will help you become spiritually strong so that you will be victorious through whatever season of life you're going through right now. You see, I know that some of you right now, you're going through a very challenging season in your life. There's issues with family members. There's issues in your own bodies. There's issues in your families. You're wondering what's going to happen with our nation. You see the news. You, you think about COVID-19 and all that's happening. You're going through a very challenging season right now. And I hope this morning that I may encourage you and help strengthen your spirit. Before we get into our text, <coughs> before I, I expound on our text, I need to give you some background of what was going on. Well, Paul and Barnabas were traveling from town to town, preaching about Jesus. In the town of Lystra, Paul even healed a man who had been crippled from birth. These men were going around doing the Lord's work, doing it the Lord's way, and giving the Lord all the credit. But then some of the disgruntled people from the previous two cities where they had been ministering, these Disgruntled troublemakers came to Lystra and started making problems for Paul and for Barnabas. They stirred up the people against Paul and Barnabas to such a boiling point that these people grabbed Paul. They took him outside the city. They stoned him and left him for dead. Well, now let's pick it up at verse 20, Acts 14, verse 20. And the word of God says, But when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city. And on the next day, he went on with Barnabas to Derba. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Someone said, 
life is often a mixture of victories and challenges, some of which are too complicated to comprehend. This was the case with Paul and Barnabas in our text. One minute, Paul is being used by God and being celebrated by the people. The next minute, they're the same people who are celebrating him are dragging him outside the city and stoned him and left him for dead. You see, my friends, we must, we must, we must understand that we cannot give up trusting Jesus even when life gets hard to understand. There are things that are going to happen in this life that are going to be very challenging and hard for us to understand. But we cannot give up trusting Jesus. We must continue to live for him because it will be worth it in the end. Well, Paul understood this. And he was a minister at heart. So he, he returned to, to strengthen the believers in the cities where he and Barnabas had been threatened and even attacked. Now the word strengthen in verse 22, it means to establish or it means to make firm. You see, Paul went, went back to those cities where he had planted these churches and, and he went back to these believers there. Commentator Matthew Henry said, the minister's work is to establish saints as well as awaken sinners. You see, these new churches that Paul and Barnabas had planted and these new Christians that, that accepted Christ under, the, under their ministry, they needed to be firmly established in what Paul had taught them. They needed to be firmly established and strengthened in what they had believed. My friends, what about you and me? I ask us this morning, are we firmly established in what we say we believe? Or do we waver in our Christian walk? Do we slip back into those ungodly ways? Or do we allow worldly friends who don't love the Lord, who don't follow the Lord, who don't even know the Lord, do we allow these friends to tempt us to go back into sinful ways, to go back into those things God has delivered us from? Oh, my friends, those things that God has set us free from. Why do we allow our friends to pull us back into those same sins? See, the truth of the matter is this. We all struggle at times. Amen? Amen? Amen. And we all go through seasons when we need our faith strengthened. Trust me, even pastors do. So Paul strengthened the believers in two ways. First, he encouraged them. He encouraged them. He encouraged the believers by urging them to continue in the faith, or as it says in the NIV translation, to remain true to the faith. So what did Paul mean by that? What did he mean by continue in the faith? Well, he, he definitely meant that they should continue believing in Jesus Christ as their Savior, but I believe there's more to it. I, I believe there's more to, to just believing in Christ as their Savior. I believe Paul wanted to, to encourage them that they should continue believing in what he had taught them. Continue believing in the Christian faith. The message paraphrase says, Paul urged them to stick with what they had begun to believe and not quit. And not quit. You know, I know of people who say they believe and they follow Jesus Christ, but then they pick and choose what parts of the Bible they want to believe and they want to follow. You see, we can't respond to the word of God like we respond to a fast food restaurant menu. Friends, we can't have it our way. Come on, somebody. We can't have it our way. If we want to live in victory on earth and receive God's rewards in heaven, we must live God's way. And how do we live God's way? According to God's word. See, Paul wanted to encourage them, stick to the word. Paul 
going to encourage them. I came to your cities. I, I planted a church there. I, I taught you the things of God. I, I taught you the things of Jesus Christ. And, and Paul is encouraging these believers. And I, I am encouraging you, friends, stick with the word of God. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, he said, now I, re I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. The words being saved, understand it's in the present tense. You need to know that. It's in the present tense. And to be saved means to be delivered. So what is Paul saying here? Paul is saying that, that, that believing the word of God brings future deliverance or salvation from the penalty of sin. All right? When we believe in the word of God, we will not receive the penalty of sin. But Paul is saying, but if we believe the word of God, it, it, it gives us deliverance over the present power of sin. Let me say it again. When we believe God's word, okay, we will not be punished by future penalties, which is hell. But we will be delivered from present power, which is sin. And it's through the word of God. It's through the word of God. This is why, friends, I will continue to remind you to read your Bibles and pray. I will remind you that until I'll, they kick me out of here. You must read the Word of God. Amen. Hear me, my friends. If the only time you feed yourself spiritually on God's Word is on Sunday mornings, then you are not getting enough spiritual nutrition to make you strong so you will withstand the attacks of the enemy. It is the word of God, his word that will deliver us from sin's power. Satan can't stand up against the word of God. Come on, somebody. Remember when our Lord was tempted, what did he use? The word of God. The Bible says the word of God is like a double-edged sword. The word of God is our weapon, amen? We must use God's word. But understand, for God's word to be a powerhouse in our life, we must continue to grow in our knowledge and our understanding of the word, and we must apply it to our lives. Listen, we can't just sit down and read the word of God and say, okay, I, I did my duty for the day, I'm done. I read it. No, 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 no. We read it, and, and, and then we, we meditate on the word of God. Meaning we think about that word. We, we allow it to, to go through our minds and, and to go through our spirits and to get a proper understanding of, of what God's word is saying to my life. And then we apply it to our lives. See, we, 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 as Paul said, we can't read the word of God and just walk away. It's like looking in the mirror and see your face is jacked up and don't do nothing about it. When we read the word of God, we know we're jacked up. Can I get a witness? I know I am when I read the word of God. When I read God's word, it becomes evident that I need God's help, that I fall short of God's word. So I can't just read it and walk away. I have to read it and know God help me to apply it to my life. Because once God's word gets in our spirit, in our hearts, in our minds, the Bible says don't conform to the ways of this world, but be what? Transformed. Be changed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. So we must fill our minds and our hearts with the renewing word of God. That gives us that power to resist Satan's attacks. You see, when we don't read God's word, we don't know what weapons to use. Amen? See, when Satan comes with whatever attack he wants to come with, and understand, my friends, Satan will tempt me with the things that I struggle with, and he'll tempt you with the things you struggle with, right? But as we read God's word, 
and we realize this is an issue in my life. This is a weakness in my life. I'm going to meditate on this specific word of God. I'm going to memorize this specific word of God. So then, when the enemy comes, I've got my weapons ready. I've got the word. And it's the word of God gives us that power to resist Satan. And Paul is saying to the church today and to us that we must hold fast to God's word. I admit to you that holding fast to the word of God is not always easy to do. It is not. But it will be worth it, my friends, when we see Jesus face to face. And hear him say, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I encourage you, friends, stick with it. Hold fast to what you have believed. I promise it'll be worth it. Well, the second way Paul strengthens the believers here in Acts chapter 14 was he warned them. He warned them. Last week I had to uh, get some, some tests done, so they had to draw some blood. And when I sat in the chair, the tech asked, you know, what arm did I want? I said, it doesn't matter to me. And you know what they do? Before they, before they stick you, they lie to you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. They lie to you. This is the lie. A little pinch. No, it's going to hurt. But they do that to warn you so you won't jump out of the chair, amen? Well, Paul here is warning the church about the pinch of persecution and troubles that we, will, that we all will face. You see, every believer won't experience the same level of persecution and troubles that Paul had to experience, but we all will experience our own troubles. Am I right about it? And our own persecution. Paul said in 2 Timothy 3, chapter 12, he said, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And if you don't think this is true, you stay following Christ for long enough, you'll know what I'm talking about. Hmm? People will misunderstand you. People will criticize you. And people will purposely come at you. Why? Because you are a follower of Jesus Christ. And if it hasn't happened yet, like Paul, I'm warning you, get ready. It's going to happen. It might happen on your campus at school. Folks may treat you differently because you follow Jesus. It might happen at work. Huh? Folks will mess with you because you follow Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. When, when the bars and, 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 and clubs open again and, and they want to go to happy hour after work. Uh, but you got to go to Bible study. Uh. Uh, they they, they want to go get, get, get the drink on. But you got to go to a small group. What are you going to do? You see, there's going to be a level of persecution and troubles against you just because you follow Jesus. And Paul warns every believer. You got to get this, friends. He warns every believer here that between earth and heaven, we will suffer some form of persecution. He is saying you cannot get into the kingdom of God, meaning you can't get into heaven if you're a believer without going through some troubles in this earth, not because you're a knucklehead, but because you love Jesus. Now who knows we go through troubles because we're knuckleheads. That ain't the Lord's fault, I gotta tell you. That's your fault, all right? But we will go through troubles. We will go through some persecution only because we Love Jesus. And Paul is telling the believers this now, so when these things happen, 
they won't get discouraged, and they won't fall away. I think one of the problems that preachers, I'm, I'm speaking about preachers now, that we cause is we paint this picture of following Jesus like a lovely walk in the park. Hmm? Come, 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 oh, come be a Christian and, and, and the bluebird of life will land on your shoulder every morning and sing songs to you. We, we come off like, it's, like it's, it's, it's a life where there's no trouble. But the truth of the matter is, there are challenges when you're going to follow the Lord. There are problems when you're going to follow the Lord. There's persecution that comes at the person that's a Christian that is different from every other type of persecution that comes at people only because you love Jesus. Now, as I said, if you haven't dealt with it, I'm warning you, as Paul has warned these believers, it's going to happen. So when it does happen, don't don't, don't, because what people do is when these things happen, then they want to walk away from the Lord. Oh, this Christian thing doesn't work. That pastor lied to me. I'm not supposed to have troubled days. Mm. I'm not supposed to have challenging days. Mm -mm. No, Jesus says in this life, he said what? Well, you will have trouble. But he said, take heart, for he's overcome the world. You see, what was he saying? What was he saying? He was saying, he was saying, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verses 18 and 19, he says, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. He said, the world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it. But you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world so it hates you. You ever notice in life when you start praying, it feels like all hell breaks out in your life? Anyone know what I'm talking about? Maybe it's just me. When you, when you make the decision to fast and pray, you ever notice how things seem to get worse? Come on, am I by myself here today? Does anybody else know what I'm talking about? Because I'll be honest with you, I don't really like fasting in the physical. I, you know, listen, I, I, look at me, I don't, miss, I don't miss many meals. Come on, somebody. I don't miss many meals. All right? So, for real, for real, if I'm going to fast, I'm doing it for the spiritual aspect. I know there's benefits, but in my, in my flesh, I don't like it. So, I'm dealing with the physical pain of the fasting, and then there's the spiritual attack when I choose to fast. But Jesus said it's going to be worth it. Because if God before us, who can be against us? Listen, loved ones, I, I, you got to get this. When we make a decision to follow Jesus, there's going to be challenges. Yes, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And yes, the love of God is always with us. And yes, we have hope. Our hope is in the Lord. But we have good days and we have bad days. And there are things that are going to happen. Listen to me, loved ones. Hear me this morning. There are things that are going to happen in this life that we will not, in this life, get the answers to. I need you to know that today. There are going to be some things where you're going to be like, God, help me to understand this. And you might not get that answer. But who knows that's all right? Because God has got it in control. He's got it. And, and, and we're going to be with him for eternity so we can ask him one day. Amen? Paul was committed to following Jesus Christ and helping the believers grow in their knowledge of the Lord even through suffering and through persecution. My friends, are we committed to obeying the word of God and following Jesus, no matter the challenge, no matter the setback, no matter what this life brings to us, are we committed to following Jesus no matter what? You see, it's easy 
to sing songs of praise when everything is working out okay. Isn't it? It's another thing to sing those songs of praise when life becomes challenging. I love this quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. Listen to this. This is what he says. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. I love that quote. Evangel God is looking for men and women who will stand for Jesus Christ even when it isn't comfortable and it isn't convenient. My brothers and sisters, God is looking for a people who will encourage their brothers and sisters in Christ even when it isn't comfortable and it isn't convenient. Listen, as I get close to closing, I've not had anything close to the type of persecution and challenges in ministry that Paul has had. Not even close. But I can tell you, I've had my challenges. I've had my challenges. You see, my friends, there, there, have, there has been some Sundays when I've had to stand here and preach the word of God to you. And my heart was heavy. There's been some Sundays when I had to stand here and preach God's word to you. And my heart was broken. There's been some Sundays when my wife and I have been up all night long, tossing and turning, can't sleep. There's been some Sundays, friends, when I was in my office on 9.30. At 9.30 a.m., I'm on the floor of my office crying out to God, God, why? But 10.30, an hour later, I'm standing here encouraging you in the things of God. And I want you to know this morning that what got me through was the grace of God in your prayers. That was it that got me through. But what am I saying? I'm saying, friends, we all go through challenges. We all go through troubles. But God is still on the throne. God is still God. And if you hold on, if you put your chin up, your chest out, get the word. God will let you know in the end it's worth it. It'll be worth it. I encourage you, Evangel, stick with it. Stick with the word of God you have believed. Don't give up. Don't give in. When life gets tough, press in to Jesus. And he will give you the strength and the grace to make it through one more day. Listen, sometimes you can't even pray for next week. You got to pray for today. Am I right about it? Lord, give me grace and strength to get through today. And he will. I promise you. I promise you. When we see Jesus, you're going to go through it. You're going to be challenged. There's going to be good days. There's going to be bad days. But if you stick to it, I promise you. When you see Jesus face to face, it will all be worth it. Worship team, would you come? When a victorious athlete is granted the opportunity to do the lap of honor around the arena, it is truly a joyous occasion. And as he or she runs, waving their hands in the arena, proudly holding their country's flag, their victory is celebrated by many as that athlete that brought glory to their country. Well, my friends, Jesus Christ was victorious on the cross. He paid 
completely the penalty for our sins and has guaranteed salvation for all those who believe in him. So as Christians, our lives should reflect the joyful athlete running that victory lap. When we run around the arena of life, facing its tests, facing its trials, facing its temptations, we should do it with the full knowledge that the race has already been won. Why? Because Jesus Christ was victorious. Remember that. Remember that. No matter what you face, no matter what you go through, remember that Jesus Christ has already made you a winner. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today that through you, Lord, we're going to make it, Lord. We know there's going to be dark days, challenging days, hard days. But Lord, we're so thankful to know that your word says, through it all, you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. We may fall, but we will not be utterly cast down. Lord, we may have to take a spiritual standing eight count, but we're not going to be knocked out. Because you're going to hold up our arms and hold up our legs and allow us to make it through another day. You're not going to let us go, Lord. Lord, we're so thankful that you will not let us go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We know that you've gone to prepare a place for us. That where you are, we may be also. And one day we'll see you face to face. And we may have some spiritual scars. Like Jacob, we, we may walk with a spiritual limp. But Lord, it's going to all be worth it. Because we're going to be with you. And you're going to give us then new bodies. Hallelujah. And eternally we will praise you and worship you. Know that you never let us go. Remind us, Lord. Strengthen us. Encourage us. Let us know that it will be worth it in the end. Amen. Would you stand with me? Let's worship the Lord together. without seeing that you're working it out for our good. And yes, we are already victorious. So we take comfort in that. One more time, church. Let's worship our Lord together. And get ready to face the rest of this day and this week.
dark and cleanse and cleanse every part of me and all I am and all I am I surrender give me faith to trust what you is great. I'm broken inside. I give you my life. Jesus, we give it say, we believe, we believe, 
You make us brave and strong In your spirit we belong Christian has hope even through challenges and problems, even through heartache and pain, sickness, the death of a loved one. The reason the Christian believes that it will all be worth it is because Jesus Christ is our Savior. So we know that this life is not all that there is. And one day we will be with him. If you're here in our sanctuary or watching me online and you don't have that assurance. If you would die today, you don't know where you would go. But if you want to be assured of the hope that when you die, you will be with God. Then you need to give your heart to Jesus. So I want to ask I ask you to pray with me this morning. If you're here in our sanctuary, pray this prayer. If you're watching me online, no matter where you are, whether you're in the state of Pennsylvania or even outside our nation, if you want to give your life to Christ, you want to be sure that when you die, you're going to go to heaven. Pray this prayer with me. Just everyone here, just bow your eyes. Bow your heads and close your eyes. And just repeat after me, Jesus Christ. I've made many mistakes. I'm a sinner. Please come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. I turn from them. I turn to you. I believe that my salvation is on you and you alone. Be my savior. I pray in your name. Amen prayed that prayer today, the Bible says you are born again. You were a Christian. You are a child of God. If you prayed that prayer and you are in the Pennsylvania area in the Glen Olden, Philadelphia area, please give our church a call because we want to help you. We want to disciple you, meaning we want to come alongside you to help you be that man or woman of God. If you're not in our area and you prayed that prayer, I, I, I encourage you, reach out to our Bible teaching church. Talk to the pastor. Talk to the pastoral staff. Tell them that you're a new Christian and you need to be discipled. Amen? Amen? Let me bless you. So may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Everyone said... Give him praise and ask of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Evangel, online campus, we love you. We pray for you. Be safe, and we'll see you soon. God bless.